face to face. Can we sing that bridge together one last time? I see bright crimson waves. I see bright crimson robes draped over the a wide open tomb where there should be a casket. The children are singing and dancing and laughing. The Father is welcoming. This is our homecoming. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is Father, He's Friend, He's Savior, and He is Lamb. If He did it before, He will do it again. You see, He's the, he's the same God who carved out a path in the ocean who constantly makes ways in impossible situations. He is the God who calmed the storm with the word and healed a leper who was simply reaching out. We serve the same God of Abraham, David, Mary, and Paul, choosing the unqualified, broken people, yet working through them all. You see, we serve a living, active God, an unchanging God, a God who is constantly welcoming the prodigals back home. You see, if he did it before, I'm telling you, he will do it again. If he answered prayers from back then, he will answer prayers now. If he came in power back then, he will come in power now. He is the God who sees and he sees you right 
now. So when it feels like everything is shaking, I want you to remember, he is secure. He is steady. He is unchanging and, and everlasting. He is the same God. Well, that's a hard one to follow up now, isn't it? Uh, that was powerful. Uh, welcome to church. How y'all doing today? Awesome. Uh, if you guys want to stand up, we're going to go through a couple things and then uh, we'll get to some worship. Um, like we do every Sunday, we're going to read through our mission vision statement. Um, I know we say it all the time, but this is so important. And it's kind of like that video said, you know, we're all in process. I think we've all done some stuff. We've all had some stuff in the past maybe that, you know, it weighs on us. But uh, the church is a hospital. This isn't a place for perfect people. This is a place to get better. So we desire to be a safe place, to be in process, a place where everyone realizes they are in process. None of us have arrived. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, your love. It's amazing. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you into this place today. We, we ask you to touch lives. We ask you to touch hearts. Make some change. Make a way. Um, like the song says, you know, you leave the 99 for me. You leave the 99 for you. It's a pretty amazing gift.
let's, uh, oh, sorry, that was intense. I really got into that. <laughs> let's uh, watch our announcement video. You guys can all have a seat. Morning Community Celebration Church. My name is Pastor Rachel and I am so excited that you decided to join us this morning. If you're new and it's one of your first few Sundays with us, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. We have a welcome card in the chair back in front of you or online if you're joining us virtually that we would love for you to fill out and give us some feedback on what you thought about today. If you're able to fill that out and hand it in at the welcome desk today, we have a gift that we would love to give you just to say thank you so much for coming. We have a lot going on at our church and so I wanted to mention just a couple things today. Uh, actually, today at 4 p.m. at Manorville Park, we have an event for middle and high school boys and girls to come enjoy fishing, friends, and fun. It is going to be awesome. It's a, an event put on by Equip and Relate, and you can just show up, no sign up required. Another event that you are more than welcome to show up for is a motorcycle ride that's happening next Sunday at 3 p.m., meeting at the East Quick Trip in Byron. If you like to ride motorcycles and want to be a part of that, uh, make sure you join for an awesome time of fellowship. We're also really excited to highlight this morning that starting on September 13th, we are going to have Bible Study Fellowship, or BSF, a group for women who want to dig into the Word. It's a really great opportunity to ask questions, discover answers together, and just learn more about what Scripture has to say. So if you want to be a part of this group, or if you have questions about it, we actually have a table today in the gathering grounds for you to go ask some questions. Otherwise, you can find more information and sign up for the group online. And lastly, we want to share with you that we have our church-wide family fun night coming up this Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. on August 16th. It is going to be incredible. There's going to be food trucks, there's going to be games, rock painting, and this year we're even going to have live music from members of our worship team. We really hope that you can join us and hey, invite your neighbors and friends. This is a great opportunity to make some new connections. Well, I'm so glad that you decided to join us today and go ahead and check out this video about in-home process groups, which is another exciting thing we have coming up this fall. Hi church, my name's Mallory and I just wanted to give you a heads up that a few of us have been meeting to hopefully launch in-home process groups this fall with the rest of the fall process groups kickoff. We're doing this because um, Pastor Steve's been talking about deeper community in his sermons and spurring each other on and encouraging each other. And this really um, is seen in the Bible at Acts 2.42, um, breaking bread together, fellowshipping, and just encouraging each other in Christ. And that's really what we're looking to do here. Uh, we do already have a few families that have signed up to host uh, starting this fall, but we are looking for more. This would be up to your discretion of the uh, day, the time, and how often you would want to meet. Um, as a church, we would be doing some of the church-wide Bible studies, but then really your group is up to you. General sign up to be in a group will be uh, at the fall kickoff with the rest of the process groups. But as I mentioned, if you're interested in potentially hosting, please reach out to Tammy Grandseth soon so that way we can get you down and move forward. Thanks so much. Morning, family. How are you guys all doing? Yay. Woo. I'm excited today because we have a very, very special day to put forth for those people that are going to be inducted into membership at CCC. So who I would like to have come forward is Rose Harris, Jared Harris, Jordan Kaler, Paulette Chester, and Deborah Schmidt. If you guys wanted to come right up here by me today, I'm very excited to share the stage with other people today. <laughs> These guys have gone through the membership class and have been obedient to the Lord in becoming baptized in the name of the Lord. So today you are committing yourselves to the family of CCC. We are appreciating you coming alongside of us. Brothers and sisters, you have met the requirements of membership as set forth of our Constitution and bylaws. 
As members, we let you encourage you to protect the unity of our church by acting in love towards other members and refusing to gossip and even to listen to it and by following the leaders of CCC. As members, you are no longer a passenger on a ship. You are a crew member. These, therefore, let me encourage you to pray for our growth, invite the unchurched to attend, and warmly welcome those who visit. Furthermore, I want to encourage you to serve the Lord by dis uh, discovering your gifts and your talents, becoming equipped to serve and develop a servant's heart. Lastly, I want to encourage you to support the testimony of this church by attending faithfully, living godly lives, and giving regularly. So let's take the time to pray for everybody up here today by just extending your hands. Lord, I thank you so much for these wonderful, wonderful people that come forward to you to be members of CCC. So this morning, I pray that the brothers and sisters this morning, we gladly receive you into the membership of CCC in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You guys can go and receive your certificates from the welcome desk by Tammy. Yes. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, you guys. Thank you so much. Well, let's put the Lord's Prayer together from our hearts to God by saying it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are going to take an opportunity to pray. For those that are new, we are going to pray through scripture and pray together. So I wanted to do this together as a team. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So let's pray. Lord, help me to have a generous heart to others and always to rely on you. So please take a moment to pray to the Lord. So let's read through the second scripture reading. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 17. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know we will belong to the truth and how we are set in our hearts at rest in his presence. So let's pray. Lord, help me to have a compassionate heart toward others in actions and in truth. So please take the time to pray to the Lord. So let's read through the next scripture reading. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 8, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, 
at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So let's pray. Father, help me to make a choice in my heart instead of in my mind to become a cheerful giver. So please take time to pray to the Lord. Lord, we just come to you today. We need to lean into you. We are not perfect, nor will we ever be perfect. But we come to you and we just drop off at the cross some things that we just need to give to you in order to be able to be healed by you. I'm so thankful to have you in my life and continually wrapping each and every one of us in your love. Thank you again and again for many, many opportunities that you present in front of us for us to say we want to do our best for you. So thank you again, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So if you guys wanted to take the opportunity to greet one another, good morning. You know, that's probably the neatest piece is when you guys are greeting one another. It's like so warm to my heart. I thank you so much for what God is doing. But this morning, I'm Pastor Amy, just so you know that, um, for those new people. But I'm going to start reading from Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. So if you'd like to stand with me, we're going to do it together. It's all about Cain and Abel in chapter 4. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil to an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering from the firstborn of his flock and from their fat portions. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain, his offering did not look with favor. So Cain was so very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right. Sin is encroaching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When, you're wor when you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops. You will be restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today you have driven me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so, my son. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one could find him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. You may be seated. Wow. To me, that immediately 
brought up my shortcomings back to my memory. I remember not being so, I remember being so hurtful to my sister, being so disrespectful to my parents. I remember getting my brothers in trouble because of what I thought they were doing was wrong. And I have not always given my best to be around other people. All the things that I have done wrong, I thought, man, that is what I'm thinking as I'm reading through Cain and Abel and all the things that were going wrong between them two. I invested my best in my heart to show the love of the Lord to those around me. Did I do my best? No. I sparingly gave to others. We have all gone astray in our hearts by similar actions, similar thoughts from our hearts to others. It's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. The condition of the heart is which the sacrifice was given that mattered the most. The heart of Abel brought forth the best for the Lord. This was an offering made in faith to the Lord. He gave honor to God. Abel was dedi had a dedicated heart to the Lord, showing God his devotion and love from giving from the firstborn of his flock and from the fat portions brought forth. You see, the heart of Abel and faith in God brought his best forth to him. Did Cain have a dedicated heart of his offering to the Lord? I mean, Cain brought some of his fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord, just some of his fruits. So was Cain's heart not honoring or giving praise to our father? Was it like I came with a basket full of some of my fruits of my soil, of my labor, so what do I get out of this? Or was it kind of like, I am the oldest, you know, I should see favor in my side? Did Cain have a selfish heart? Did he give God his best? Do we give God sparingly from our own hearts? If your talents are in sales, are you giving your best or are you giving sparingly to the Lord? If your talents are being a teacher, are you giving your best or are you giving sparingly to the Lord? If your talents are in technology, which is wonderful, are you giving your best or are you giving sparingly? To the Lord. One of my questions was, if you're a pastor, are you giving your best or are you giving sparingly to the Lord? Do we have the heart of Abel or do we have the heart of Cain? It's amazing when you're able to look at how your heart, if it's in tune with the word of the Lord. We also know that God looks at the heart as it says in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the, heart, the Lord looks at the heart. There was something in Cain's motivation and heart attitude that made his offering unacceptable to God. It was obviously something that he was aware of and could remedy since God tells him the fact, you will be accepted if you do what is right. So God gave him a warning to say, if you do what is right. Was Cain using a judgmental heart to Abel? As it says in Luke chapter 6, verse 37, Do not judge, or you will be judged. Do not condemn, or you will be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. So Cain made the choice to judge Abel. Abel was given the Lord's blessing because he had a dedicated, devoted heart to our Lord. As it says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, 
Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over with the, being poured out into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So Abel was able to give the measures back to the Lord. Whatever you give to those around you, it will be given back to you. If you have judged, go and apologize from your heart, lest you will be judged. Abel had the proper motivation and the proper relationship with God. A heart of gold to the Father. That relationship was based on faith, based on his faith in God. By faith offered, by faith Abel offered God a sacrifice that Cain did. Ever since the beginning, like Adam and Eve, people must come to God in faith. In faith we come to the Lord. As it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And faith is evidently what Cain lacked. It says in 1 Jude chapter 11, They came... They had taken the way of Cain. When he's saying they have taken the way of Cain, a description that refers to lawless men. This is, means that, like Cain, disobediently devised his own ways of worship. They did not come to God by faith. Cain's offering, while acceptable in his own eyes, was not acceptable to the Lord he grew very jealous of Abel, very, very jealous. He was so selfishly nursed, his wounded pride, rather than repent or go back and apologize, Cain became very angry and later in the field killed Abel and brought judgment against himself. The Apostle John gives us more insight into Cain's heart in 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. Do not be like Cain. He belonged to the evil one, and he murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil, and his brothers were righteous. Those who belong to the evil one will have evil actions, and those with evil actions will naturally hate those with righteous actions. The evil that Cain's heart was further revealed when the Lord asked him, where is your brother Abel? And he says, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? In that response, Cain tells a stone-cold lie and shows an amazing level of disrespectful behavior to the Lord. He showed a heart of stone. We must have faith in God and put into practice turning our hearts to him. As it says in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7, If anyone is poor among your fellow Israelites in any of the towns that the land of the Lord your God is given you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. Give toward them out of your heart. Your brothers, our brothers and sisters today, for us to turn our hearts to others, out of our hearts to the Lord. Has anyone had the opportunity to see Hacksaw Ridge, the movie Hacksaw Ridge? Nobody. One, two, awesome, awesome. It's an amazing, amazing story. My son, Zach, came to me and said, Hey, Mom, you're going to be talking about Cain and Abel this weekend? Come and watch this movie with me. It is an amazing movie. At the beginning, these two young boys, seven and eight, are fighting, punching one another, choking one another, scratching and hurting one another. 
And then all of a sudden, one of the boys picks up a brick and hits the other one in the head. And he almost dies. This, this young man, he was so scared, he began to run. And he fell to his knees. And he said, Lord, look what I've done. Please help my brother to live. So that day, he decided he wanted to hurt no one. Hurt no one ever again. So he signed up in the army to be the medical part of the army with no combat. He wanted non-combat to be part of his army, being a part of the army. They fought him. They did, when you go into gun training, you got to go into gun training. And he said, no, I'm not going into gun training. I'm going into non-combat. And they said, why? Because I do not want to ever hurt anybody in my life again. I've made a choice. So it was very, very difficult for him to get through to be, actually be in the army. But it was amazing because when they went off to combat, their platoon went off to combat, they went up to Hacksaw Ridge. And that ridge, as it will show on the screen, is very, very high and tall. And they had to climb up ropes to get up to Hacksaw Ridge. So they're up there fighting and fighting and fighting. And they are being overtaken by the Japanese. So his platoon receded and went back to check and make sure that they could go and know what the plan was to be able to proceed. So they all propelled down that hill, down that wall. And Doss Desmond stayed at the top of that hill. And he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And God said, go back and get that one. So he said, all right, I'm going to go back. He had no gun. He went back. And he got one guy, and that guy had no legs, but he was still alive. He came and he grabbed a rope and he tied it around that person and it proceeded down the hill and he tied it around and down that person went. Then he came back and he said, now what do you want me to do? And he goes, go get that one. So he came back and he got another one and he rappelled down the hill and he kept going and it kept saying another one and another one and another one and another one. And he saved 75 people out of his platoon. He was the only one. And he was propelling them down with this rope with his own hands. His hands were so scarred. But he said, God told me to go and be that one person. And boy, does his platoon so proud of him so amazed at what he had the opportunity to do because God was the one that told him to be that shepherd, to go and get that one. But he saved 75, and he brought some of the Japanese with him down the rope. You see, this man risked his life with no gun in his hands and what saved 75 people. He was the last one to bring the hurt towards the healing that they so needed. So was his heart changed with the incident of killing his brother, thinking that he was going to be able to kill, kill his brother? Doss did not want to hurt anyone ever again with the guidance of the Lord. He became a major piece of being medically able to go and shepherd. So do we need to come to God with our best, dropping off at the cross all that God has been, that we have been having weighing upon us? God is wanting to wash us clean and do our prayerful best for the Lord as it says in Colossians 3, the Lord says, do your best and I will do the rest. See, Doss went and did his best, but God came and did the rest by bringing forth people to be healed. 
Abel being the shepherd with a devoted heart to God, don't we need to be a shepherd that goes forth, grabbing that one sheep and keeping our hearts dedicated towards Jesus? Boy, do we need to be a de dedicated, devoted heart to the Lord. We need to accept him into our lives. We need to become like him, contribute out of our blessings of what the Lord's put into us. Deliver his word to many and exalt his name to bring back that one sheep back to him. So I just thank the Lord each and every day for what he's doing in each and every person's life. For good reasons. And I wanted you to take a moment to watch this video about what God is doing in other people's lives. Hi, I'm Diane. And my name's Kevin. The reason, um, looking back on why I took Healing Hearts uh, when it originally started was I am part of a recovery program in Al-Anon, and um, I sponsor other people and help them through the 12-step program. And I thought Healing Hearts could help me um, help them. Um, little did I know that uh, God had, was using that to help heal me. In the Healing Hearts class, um, I learned a lot about uh, walls or fences that I had put up in my heart that I thought were to protect me, which, you know, I think we do think that those are protection for us. I was also uh, keeping God out. I'm a good uh, wall builder and keeping people out. God showed me um, the walls that I had created um, and some of the inner vows I had made. I had made a vow that um, I'll always be strong. Don't count on anybody else because then you don't have any disappointment. And God showed me that that was really idolizing myself and not allowing him in and uh, allowing him to strengthen me um, instead of relying on myself. I don't always like to invest the time in other people uh, to get to know them. Uh, that's one of my stronger defects of character. But I was amazed the opportunity that I got uh, to grow in this class. It started out with, you know, eight to 12, and then we ended up uh, down to like six or eight that um, I got to know, um, and they got to know me. Healing Hearts also, um, I guess you could say, kind of peeled back the onion or um, lightened the backpack, um, just on a deeper level of digging in. Um, like I said, I've done a recovery program um, where I felt like I had dealt with most of my hurt and dealt with most of my shortcomings. and. Um, you know, looking back on Healing Hearts, it was just so much deeper. God's only given us as much as we can handle. And then he, he waits until we mature. And then he goes a little bit deeper, but it's all for, yeah, it's all for us. Thank God and glory be to him. But So Healing Hearts was great with that and helping me um, to, you know, find those bitter, roots to the bitter fruit um, that it had produced. And, you know, I think first of all, just naming it, um, identifying it, and then, um, you know, taking it to God and to somebody else, and then repenting to God of it um, and asking for his forgiveness for how I reacted to it. As we went on to the 202 class, I was able to witness the Holy Spirit led through others um, as we ministered to others. Uh, there was a group of us that would minister together and we were able to witness for a while. And then I myself was able to do prayer ministry to um, people that were seeking healing and experience the Holy Spirit working through me as well. I, I, I think it was just so much more prevalent when you're in a situation like that and totally surrendering to him and letting him lead through me. So. It is so amazing to see the healing happening in, happening in people's lives just by going and apologizing, apologizing to God 
and letting him take it from your heart, letting him release you from the baggage that you've been carrying for so many years and saying, I needed you, God. I've always needed you. I've never, never not needed you. And it's amazing what God does in the healing process that we all need to go through. So that Healing Hearts is out in the gathering grounds at a table if you have any interest. And there's also some postcards in the backs of the chairs if you guys want to check those out. You can take it home with you to let you know how to look into the possibility. But right now we are going to be singing the song I Speak Jesus, which is going to be absolutely amazing. So let's sing that together.
Let's take time to pray to the Lord. Lord, I just thank you so much for showing us that we need to do our best for you. Not to give sparingly, but to give out of our hearts with devoted hearts, with dedicated hearts to you. Lord, I don't even know what we would do without you in our lives. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for wrapping us in your arms, showing us love and compassion. I hope and pray for us to do the same to you, Father. Move us forward. Equip us with your word. Equip us where we need to go, what we need to do for your glory, not for our own. So I just thank you over and over again. So many great things to move forward with you. In Jesus Christ's name, we shout your name. Amen. So you guys may be seated. We are going to go into our tithing, and in that in tithing, we have this reading from Acts chapter 20, verse 35. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So we have an awesome way to give through the app of of CCC. You guys can go on there, and if you don't know how to do that, talk to Nick. He knows. <laughs> Otherwise, you can also text to give by dialing 507-204-7475. You can also go to our website under ccc-casson.give slash give or dot org slash give. Or you can send it in the mail for those online. Send it to 27337 County Highway 34, Casson, Minnesota. Otherwise, you can give in person by dropping your offering in the box outside. But I'm very, very thankful that you guys all came today. And invite. There, we also will have people up here to pray for you. Um, so we, I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I think Pastor Steve will be talking about next week, possibly, Genesis chapter 5. But otherwise... Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful day that you have put forth. Let us go in the grace and the Lord of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You guys have a great day. Your name is Paul.